Hello everybody. We're at the beach today in case you hadn't noticed. And I have been waiting all summer for the tides to be in the right place, for the sun to be out, and for hardly any people to be down here. And it's taken until September because the weather has been so diabolical. So let's go. So the place that I'm at has predominantly clay sand. It has a, a stony flint pebble beach. And the tide goes out. Some places up to, hmm, half a mile. So the tide is still on its way out. We have another hour of it going out. This is a very safe beach. I could walk out quite far into the water, which we'll do in a little bit. And it will still only be up to my shins. Wide expanse. There's our pier. And I'm going to start angling this down so that we can have a little look. I've got a nice shell in my bag. I'm going to get a little bit more into the pools. We'll start to have a look into them. up of a lot of chalk. So you will find chalk stones on this beach as well. Let's go out to the sea. Let's walk all the way out to the sea and then wake our way back. So just listen to the splashing and just ground yourself. usual way of growing those roots down. Down. And they'll root into chalk beds, which will have a lot of flint in it. It's a very good grade flint from this area. They found that some of the flint was transported to the Middle East all the way from here in those Neolithic times. A lot of this lava seaweed. Offshore we have big kelp beds. A lot of beautiful marine life. There is a guy on TikTok who does diving off the area that I live in. And there are little sharks, lots of octopi. And now that we've got a wind farm out to sea, which we are not allowed to do any fishing in, we have schools of dolphins living there, we have seals, and occasionally the whales are there. So if I'm a bit wobbly, it's because I slip on the seaweed sometimes. <laughs> so if the camera jerks sideways, you know I've slipped on a stone and seaweed. birds that we have here that are of 
available to see down on this beach would be two different types of seagull. You have cormorants. And every now and then you see the swans as well. Herons. And the crows. The crows are everywhere, even on the beach. And that night, the foxes come down here, crabbing, looking for shells and mollusks. You see them scouting around in these rock pools. Sometimes we find the seashells halfway up the street back to their respective dens. There's a lot of life happening. So open the holes in the bottom of your feet and let any angst out into the salty saline water. down here at night in low tides, depending on moon phases, and I've been standing in the water up to my ankles and I have felt these little mini baby sharks brushing against my leg, and it's a little bit disconcerting to suddenly feel a touch your calf. Quite far out now, you can see we are level with the pier. And we'll probably be going out as far or even further than the pier reaches. Follow the path of the sun, the sun's glade. This seaweed here is called wrap. It's attached to stone, so I can't, I'm not going to pull any off. I wonder if there's any is loose. Let's hold this up and have a look. It's quite rough. Very slimy. What is there? Any creatures here? Here's the chalk. Can you see that chalk there? Chalk and flint together. Some of these stones are huge. Look at that. That's a really big stone. urchins here. We have probably some grey corals and we have anemones with their little fingers. And of course the best time to come beach coding is after a storm. I found some amazing things down here that you don't normally find. See, the sand is a sort of mud clay colour, greyish. Somebody pointed out in my last beach video that they wouldn't have gone in the sea because it's supposed to be blue. Well, it actually depends on what is underneath. Because water reflects, it holds all of the colours Clay particles are very small. Can you see the current moving? Stand back a little bit. It's being carried that way. It's trickling out. There are seabirds. 
Yes. Bivalve or bivalve. Could have had another one there. We have algae growing on these stones. Look at that pink algae. Along with all of this seaweed that is attached. Yeah. Some kind of crustaceans, worms perhaps, have actually welded with their glue onto this stone. So we'll put that back. Now let's head out. Deeper now. walk towards the sun. I comes in I would probably if I was still walking it would probably be twice the height of me out this far so it would probably be about 10 foot deep there's a big tidal drag here if that's the right word Another moon is still up. You might be able to see her there. I can't see the screen. It is now about eight o'clock in the morning. <sighs> so let's do some ocean. Find a steady place to put my feet. As we bend and we gather that sun's chi, we bring it down. Breathe in, breathe out. And breathe in again, gathering energy. 
yourself with it. Let's turn around and let the sun Qigong and Tai Chi. So we'll do eight of these now. One, two, three, In this set of exercises, anyway, called the Baduan Jin. Seven, or was that eight? Three, pulling my arrow back, letting it go. Four, pulling that arrow back, letting it go. Five, pulling that arrow back. move is called separating heaven and earth. Stand. Let me see if you can see my shadow. Here it is. Literally, it's wise old owl turns. And I'm just going to rotate my head to one side. Back to the middle. Rotate to 
the other side. too often I do the Tai Chi. Let's do some cloud hands. You need to look up Ba, B A, Duan, D U A N, Jin, J I N, and that is called the Eight Pieces of Brocade. And it is a very easy exercise set. The children are all taught this at school in the mornings. When they leave school, they go out to work, and then when they retire, you see them out in the parks doing their Tai Chi and Qigong. Some of them will have fans, some will have swords, and others even spears. And there are axes as well, because of course, Tai Chi is a martial art. rock pools. What are all those seagulls munching on shrimps and fry? People catch mackerel off here and we sometimes see the shoals dancing and moving out to sea and all the birds flying above. running down here with my dog Alfie. Some of you will remember Alfie. Water was a swear word to him, so he never went very deep. He used to come running every morning down here. Rain, shine, when he was younger. And we'd be walking down here three or four times a day. about four blocks back from the sea, so I do see it nearly every day. <sighs> we are getting a little bit shallower now as the tide goes further out. my bag around. I bought the nice blue abalone. Let's put the cloth back in the bag. It's protective cloth. Just 
do this bag up. Trusty little hiking bag. Birds are all still there. And we have these seagulls are very bold now. Especially around the eating areas. They swoop down and grab food off your plates. They are that bold. They steal your fries. And they're quite big. They're, they're the size of cats, some of them. What is here? Let's see what interesting things we can find. Tiny little fragment of a shell there. We have some chalk. one of these lovely little pink stones. I just love these little pink stones. We have mussels down here as well. I see if I can find a and we have something which I'm looking for, which will be further up on the beach, called an Atlantic slipper shell. Ah, here's one. Right, I can tell you about these. These are fantastic little beings. So this is called an Atlantic slipper shell. Some of you may be familiar. And basically, I'm just going to put that down for a second. It's shells. These mollusks can change sex. We often find them stuck together, two or three on top. They can be as much as, as many as ten. And the bottom one, this one here, is a female. And all of the ones piled up on top are males. And they send a great big long penis down to mate with her. And then when she dies, the one underneath at the bottom will change sex. So a very unusual shell. There may be many more that do this. But they are everywhere and I actually make runes on these sometimes. I did. Here's another clam. See the trickling here. The tide is still going out. These birds aren't even worried about me. They are that bold. 
We also, if we are lucky, can find fossilised sea urchins. You see me holding up fossilised sea urchins in the videos, in the oceanic Reiki videos before. I normally use them for grounding. I also use them for holding hands for cleansing. Because they have little beaks underneath. I think they are related in some way to the octopi. And those were called lucky stones. And the children in the olden times would turn over all of the stones on the beach to find a lucky stone and sell it to a pilgrim or somebody who wanted some luck. some sand because I want us to sit down on the sand for a little bit. Still keeping my eye out for anything interesting. So to that person who said, oh it's very dirty sea, I wouldn't swim in there. Look, you can see right through it. And the seas are a lot cleaner in the UK this year. Last year was, and over this year, the water companies were emptying sewage into it so we couldn't go in the water in summer. When we get lots of rain at one go, the, the sewage systems can't cope with it. So they just think, uh, we'll let it into the sea. The fine that the government will give me is less than it costs me to process it or flush it out, whatever. So people have been marching. And hopefully, Now it is much better, now that the public is on board and aware of what is happening. There's another slipper shell. Here we go. This is what I was saying earlier, wasn't it? There you go. There's a little mini chain. And that female, when she dies, that male will become... Female. So perhaps those shells are good for gender fluidity, if you're struggling with that, but also community. More water coming out. Because they're working as a community, those. moment. Nobody needs anything from you at this moment. Spend the whole morning here. The children go back to school today in England. Many parents breathing a sigh of relief, no doubt. And life now returns to the next semester, doesn't it? The new year, the new academic year. Time to turn over a new leaf, make some new pledges. 
perhaps you want to be top of your game, study hard. And make those intentions now in this space here. Draw the ripples in the sand. Somebody's needing some help. There's a siren. We send them the best wishes that we can. Healing for whatever traumas are falling on them. this camera up a little bit so you've got a better view okay let's do some clearing as we hear that siren i'm thinking of all of you who have got things going on in your life at the moment and everybody watching just send out some good thoughts if things are all right for you at this moment we draw the say hey key we draw the abalone shell I've been holding. Empty these shells out. Let me just dip it in some water. Oh, we've got to get up. <laughs> I didn't plan that well, did I? Let's clean this shell. Do some cleansing. and clearing and shifting, turning over that new leaf. Cleansing, clearing, then bringing those light curves. There is still Reiki coming out of my hands and it can flow through these holes here. As well as around the actual shell. I get the more 
I dislike loud motors. There was a time I did spend a summer with the bikers in the UK, driving out to country pubs on the weekend. Many moons ago, probably about 30, 35 years ago now, Black hair, I had the leather jacket, I had the knee high boots. <laughs> and I'll see if I can drag some photos out of myself in younger times. It'll be good for a laugh, won't it? I would have been 80s, 88, something like that. Summer of freedom. I just want peace and quiet. I'm in bed by 10 o'clock. I'm up at 6. <laughs> but I still remember how to party. I just don't do it anymore. When you're young, you just want to go out. You want to meet people, have some fun. Not everyone, but a lot. as I suspect many of you want. Draw a distant healing symbol, Honsha. Anything that has gone on in the past for your worries in the future. For anyone who comes in and watches this even in a couple of years' time. sun and bring it down your front line. Look at the shadow there. Clearing the beautiful sea air and the sun and the tidal flow. Just rain. Tingles. 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 I don't know if you get them from there. Some do, some don't. But just know if you don't feel the energy, if you don't get those tingles, it doesn't mean it's not working. And you might think, mm, they're probably saying that just to cover themselves. But I was initiated into Reiki. And I could not feel the energy coming out of my hands for about eight years. My clients could feel it. Reiki students could feel it, but I couldn't. This is why you see me using the pendulum a lot. And it actually took Qigong, Tai Chi, martial arts to get that energy flowing. probably turned off, it's not for everyone, just these walking videos, and I get that. I just try and bring different things, change it up a little bit, make it different, so that it's not the same all the time. I'm not very techy, as you've probably realised, I can't do all that editing, music in the background. 
I turn it on and we record. And if we make mistakes, well, we are only human, aren't we? I'm going to head back to those rocks, those big rocks you can see. That's where I come down to the beach from. Mock my bike up to a lamppost because I cycle everywhere. drive because I suffer from epilepsy. On the upside, it's annoying because I want to go to all of these stone circles in these wilderness places and I can't get to them in case unless somebody drives me. But on the upside, I can soul myself. My carbon footprint will be time doesn't she oh look this pearlescent caught the sun and caught my eye I think that is a tiny little fragment of a muscle See the chalk and the flint. The flint comes in a couple of colours, a sort of whitey grey, blackish colour, and these browns. And sometimes we can see the shrimps. Look at this here. Worms not have been making their homes on that. Fragment, another fragment of a slipper shell. That's a very old one. And up we get again. There, I was looking for something pearlescent and we found that tiny little piece. That can go in a medicine bag. These ridges of sand, I can really feel them on the arch of my foot. It's quite a good little stimulator. Somebody's dark noise really carries at the water, doesn't it? You have to be careful what you say, especially if you're talking about people, which we try not to do. The Buddha said. If that person is in the room, you should not be talking about them. I think that was one of Buddha's sayings, or perhaps Paramahansa Yogananda. Look at that red seaweed there. They say all of the seaweed off the British Isles is edible. And I have actually taken some home and fried it up in a seaweed. dish, those little clams. I cheat, I get them from the supermarket though. <laughs> I've never been fishing in the UK. 
okay. I used to fish out in Bermuda when I was a child and I was not very successful. Probably because I'm so loud and excitable. Because I was probably jumping around and talking loudly. <laughs> so I scared the fish away. out a little bit as we do this last stretch across the shifting sands and the rock pools. I want you to think of three things that you would like to get rid of. Perhaps impatience, tar being tardy, I don't know, being angry, pain, whatever. Here we have that white feather. I said that so the angels are by. Let that go. Oh, it's sticking to me, isn't it? There it's gone. A wish. I think of three things you would like to get rid of. Make those intentions now. And now I want you to think of four things that you would like to bring in to replace. Setting those intentions for the start of the school year. Some of you have already gone back, I think in the States they went back a few weeks ago. But over in Europe it is about now. University is going back at the end of September. It is about the fourth today. May the fourth be with you. There we go. Those intentions, those four new leaves that you are going to turn over, however big, however small. As we cross this last rock pool, gathering energy. Bringing it in, whoops, tripped on a rock then. Gathering energy. And bringing it in. to start sending those roots down. Sending those roots far down to the ground below you. There's a slip on seaweed. to 
towards the stones, to walk solidity. Grounding this healing in, grounding this little quiet time we've had for an hour. I just thought I'd bring you something a little different today, keeping it fresh. Listen to the noise. sit ourselves down on this stone here. This is one of my altar stones. <laughs> Come and do magic here sometimes. Sitting down. Now thank you for joining me today. And I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful week ahead of you. Bye bye now. <laughs>